Talk Track Show. Um, and I'm going to tell you, this trophy right here, Daniel's walking in now. Uh, I feel like we've received a trophy equal to this one. Um, I don't think a lot of people, or I, I shouldn't say that. Uh, a lot of people wouldn't understand the process it takes um, to be able to receive this thing we're going to show you tonight. And how many, <laughs> how many late nights, um, hair pulling um, sessions, etc. for the last two, two and a half years, two, two years for sure. And how many times uh, I got Daniel on the other side and he's showing me we're going back and forth at each other here. But uh, how many times we'd either be in Charlotte. And we get a phone call and say, hey, I need you to come check this out. And we literally jump on the plane that day, fly to California, go over to uh, the office and work with the guys, uh, resolve whatever the issue was. Sometimes it was a 15 minute, someday it'd be two days. And we'd run around and, and honestly use all of our friendships up here in California, uh, either at Brian over at Long Travel Industries or Cal Time or SR Machine, Larry Novak and Warren and those guys. Uh, and make new pieces instantly so that we could keep this process going. But um, I thought I'd start here because I yeah. think that this this trophy that we got um, this week uh, is equal to this one. And um, I think once I get into the process and explain what's going on there, I think uh, people might understand a little bit more. I know Polaris and Can-Am and Kawasaki, Yamaha, Honda, Suzuki... Um, Ford, Chevrolet, they understand what it takes. I didn't understand. I've been fortunate enough to, um, to race with some of these guys or race for these companies and thought I understood what the process was, but it was, uh, it was a lot more. And it was, um, it was definitely hair pulling. Uh, right. As you guys see, I've got a, a big hair head now, head of hair after, uh, after the COVID recovery. Um, I want to thank my buddy Mark Martin and Gavin for um, hooking me up with a remedy to... Uh, not only grow my hair back, but uh, I think it's growing like a weed. <laughs> so, um, want to give Facebook a quick tour of the trophy room? Yeah, let's uh, let's do that. I'll uh, I'll switch over here and do it one more time with Daniel. Uh, he was um, I shouldn't say late to the party because he's never late to the party. He's a, he's ahead of the game. I'm the one that's always making us late. But um, this is uh, 1990 uh, four wheel overall. I believe that is the first time that a truck actually beat the motorcycles at the Baja 1000. Um, was driving for Venable Racing, worked with, um, this, is, this is kind of ironic, um, but not really, when you, when you really think about it, it's about people. And on this team uh, were some very, very smart guys. This was, um, this was the Venable Ford, and at that time, Mike Smith worked on that team, Daryl Husted worked on that team, um, Daryl from Best in the Desert worked on it, um, gosh, Jim Jackson, um, can't say enough about Russ Weirdemont. Um, probably you're going to hear that name more and more, especially with Carson Weirdemont and his Kawasaki program. Uh, he was on that team. I said, uh, I know I did say Mike Smith, uh, but there was uh, obviously um, Frank D'Angelo, Jim Venable. Uh, that was the beginning of, of Trophy Trek. And at that time, we won the Ball 1000 overall. That was a uh, a class eight that won overall. Um, and then um, I believe you're going to see some things happen with UTVs in the near future. I know Mitch Guthrie got very close to winning Silver State. We thought we would have a shot at it. Nora a couple weeks ago of putting a UTV on the box for an overall. But that was class eight. Um, got an overall. I believe that you will see a UTV. I know people are going to question me again, but you're going to see a UTV. I know it's going to be mine, but uh, let's hope so. Uh, is going to overall one of these score or best in desert races because the technology and the advancement with factories that's being put into these vehicles today is um, is awesome. So, all right, let's go down the stairs and let's get tonight's show going. Sure, I learned a lot in this story. Uh, this is such a <laughs> such a cool. Um, this was a good story here, a twenty eight car. Show in the shock room real quick. Cool room, um, shock room. Yeah, let's. Let's go in the shock room. I don't, I don't, that'll be an interesting one. I'll pull up some, um, some very uh, interesting parts. Um, these shocks here, uh, this shock right here, uh, was one of the shocks off of the La Victoria 
uh, trophy truck. Uh, these shocks were actually made in, you know, some people said I was giving my buddy uh, Brett King and Lance King a hard time. Uh, never, uh, not, not whatsoever. Uh, those guys are obviously uh, experts in the industry, um, but these shocks were around before King was in business. Um, and we were using trophy truck shocks. That's, that's not a diss to them, that's just an explanation of how long some of these parts have been around. Here's one of the, um, the original um, pop-it check balls. I don't know if you notice it. No. Yeah, there is a pop-it in there. Check that out. That was one of our original poppets for bypass tube shocks. And you see that little tip in it to, to run the flow. That would drop down in here. Oop, other way. Down in here. And that would open on compression and close on rebound. Um, this was one of the, the cool little things my dad was working on at one time. Uh, this is a, a stepped. Um, basically, this went down inside the shaft. And as it went in there, it would change positions. And it was a shaft position sensitive shock that he was working on. Um, obviously, he's got a bunch of sway away stuff over here that he was playing with. Uh, and then we got some original, you know, RG original shocks. Um, got bleeders in the, in the end of the shaft. There's so many cool old parts in here. Some bumpers and stuff. Some bump stock stuff. Just way away parts. Um, actually, there's a set of blazer shocks over around the corner. And just uh, tons of different parts from back in the day. So let's get into Mike's show. Dan, you want to bring in the shock room real quick? We'll do that. As you see, the, um, the old race shop has basically you converted into speed UTV, speed UTV, speed UTV. Uh, we just left the Havistu facility yesterday, and there is tons of, of UTVs there as well. I know the questions would be when are customers getting UTVs, and we'll address that tonight. Uh, this is some of the window that stuff. Daniel's got a, a decent little presentation set up. We spent about about 10 minutes putting it together, maybe 15, 10, 15. Maybe 15 minutes. Um, I'm going to have to get Alan over here to see if he'll um, play cameraman for me. I can do it. Jason said he'll do it. Cool. Yeah. We've had a presentation together. i got 620 on right now. That's pretty good. Thank you guys for joining in tonight. Jason, how are you? Good, thank you. Good, what are we doing today? Uh, just tidying some things up and getting this car ready. I think you want to take this one around to a couple shows. So yep. we're just getting it detailed, dialed in, put the stereo in it, and uh, everything's working out. Wonderful. So this car was at um, Off-Road Expo last week. Uh, and, Can you push the blue car forward? Um, yeah. sure. I can try. Pomona. And I know some people gave us a hard time on, on this car, but this is a production car. And this thing is clean. Um, I, I honestly don't know what um, what they're talking about. Uh, over in the rear, um, they came over and peeled a sticker off right in this area. Um, so they peeled that sticker off and then called me out to look at the sticker shit. But you know, it went from welds to, to stickers to to whatever else it is. Um, but here she is. This right here is home. This car here um, has over, well, I think it has 11,000, 11,500 miles on it, uh, on this package. So this one, I'm um, really, really happy to, to have her back in the house. This was the car that, um, that ran and did all EPA for us. And um, it's awesome. It's, um, she was a workhorse for us. This is also, The car that had the mysterious weld right there, the bolt. <laughs> now, as you see, oh, this is a good comparison. Um, this is the old door latch system. I'll take you over and show you the new door latch system. And then we'll get into the night show. I just thought I'd walk around. Obviously, doors 
Uh, yeah, those are the ones that hit. Those were the ones that, um, yep, we missed it. We missed it in design. Um, but obviously, um, we got a really cool picture of Daniel stand, stand next to the new molds. And this is obviously the new door here. And there's the new door latch system. And as you can see, we picked up about three inches here. Uh, very easy for even myself to, to climb in this car. And Daniel, um, show my leg room down in here and what kind of room I I mean, have. I rode in the back of it in the race. That's right. You did ride in the back of it in the race. Um, and Daniel, how tall are you? 6'3". Six, 6'3". Three. Six, three. And how many miles did you go? How many hours? I don't know. How long was that loop? Probably four. 100, 100 miles? 100 miles. 120 right? miles with like a 25 to 30 mile an hour average. All right. Was Daniel in the, uh, in the car there? Jason's gonna. Good picture. It's a picture. Yeah, picture. J Jason's a photographer. Photographer? I took the picture. Yeah. Anybody <laughs> have a camera holder? Sure. <laughs> Let's do it. Start tonight's show. All right. What show is this? I don't even know what show it is. Um, One hundred and two, technically. Yeah. So we wanted to do a show this week. We wanted to do it back from Charlotte, but there was things we still wanted to get done here before we headed back to Charlotte. Uh, both Jason and Daniel are on a flight tonight heading to Charlotte. So as soon as we get this done, we'll get up the house, get up some showers, and uh, get them on a plane heading towards Charlotte. Uh, that might have been their plane that was just leaving them went by. <laughs> Let's go to page two. Right here. I, I believe, and I, and I know, you know, I read some of the comments this signature right here from Byron Bunker. Um, thank you, Byron, uh, for for getting this done for us. Um, you know, I have called our our testing lab um, numerous times a week, every week for the last year um, to get this cert. And this certification is um, actually probably hit the headlights from the truck. Hang on one second. Okay. Out of stage. <laughs> You're so happy about that. We had a stage in case we needed lights. Sorry about that, guys. Now we can see you. All right, perfect. Sorry about that. Uh, as I stated before, um, I consider this. Uh, this will obviously uh, be in our front office at, at Speed UTV headquarters. Um, but something we're really proud of is having a legit EPA signed certificate. Um, you know, we had passed a while ago, but the process that uh, Brian has to do. Brian? Byron? Byron has to do, excuse me. Um, is obviously a lot and there's a lot of things that, that had to happen but as you see not only are we passed with our EPA certificate it also says okay, fuel type, gasoline and we are the first I believe well maybe yeah probably first uh, power, green power sports green power sports vehicle E85 uh, to market. Uh, maybe someone will come in and challenge me on this here this afternoon and say, or this evening and say, ah, you're not the first, but I think we are. So we are green with E85, but we're also more power with E85 because it's uh, more of an alcohol based fuel, which brings in our cylinder temperatures down. Um, so we did get compliant on both of those things, as well as we are good for our Baja Bandit our El Diablo and our El Jefe. So all three vehicles uh, we have EPA certs for. Um, to have a CARB cert, we have to have an EPA cert. Uh, that is obviously in process and that'll be our next um, our next certificate that we need to, need to obtain to sell in California. Um, but we can sell in all other states except for California, um, effectively, basically immediately 
but we also have a few things that are, are interesting. We needed to, um, we wanted to obtain this certificate before we proceeded with a lot of our manufacturing. So parts and pieces are all there, but if we had to change something in our engines, we don't want to have all of them done. So we've got a fleet of engines built up, um, and those will be in the first cars that will be um, starting to, to go to customers. Uh, I'm going to give you a timeline because I know that's what all you guys want. Uh, I would say we're somewhere between five and eight weeks. Somewhere between five and eight weeks before the first customer sees a car. All right. I know it's not the news you wanted, but it's finally news that I can give you that's real. Um, you know, I, I'm going to address some things in here because everybody is a CEO by uh, Instagram or Facebook or um, has a better idea than what we do. But you know, someone mentioned uh, just this week that I needed to hire a CEO. And I replied to him, do you want me to hire a CEO so he lies to you and doesn't tell you the truth? Or do you want me just to give you the truth and the hardcore facts? And that's what we do. So if we don't have anything to say, um, we say nothing at all because obviously there was things we thought we would get done and didn't happen because obviously COVID or delays for this or delays that. And I know the keyboard warriors eating popcorn are gonna say excuses, excuses, excuses. It's reality, guys. Um, but this is a trophy to me. This is something that's, that's very important because now both Todd, myself, Connor, Mike, Carla, Marlene, everybody, everybody, Ginger, Sherry, um, Daniel, Jason, that communicates with our customers. You know, we put ourselves out in front of you. We go to Sandsports and we're there to answer questions all day long for three days. Uh, we let you guys come at us and we give you the best answer we can truthfully give you. But now I can tell you we're legal to sell cars. Um, before that, it was, we were hoping that we'd be legal to sell cars and that we were hoping that all the hard work that Tony and, and Daniel and, gosh, um, Ben from Amtron and and Josh West and uh, help me with um, all brain dead, huh? Nick, all, all Nick, Nick up in uh, in the Northeast um, and James Lynn and and Jason and and everybody um, the hard work that went into obtaining this this didn't happen last week this happened two years ago we started this process and today we we have it. Um, and a lot of this process was happening during COVID as well, uh, which was delaying Ryan and some of the guys over there, you know, it's just what it was. Um, there's nothing we could do about it, but we've got it, got it in our pocket. If I had a board Warner, I'd put this right next to it. I have a Baja 1000 trophy, I'll put it right next to the Baja 1000 trophy, and I think this is, uh, this is as good as winning a championship, because uh, it's taken longer than any championship I've ever tried to compete for. Alright, let's go to the next slide. Racing. Racing, racing, racing. You guys wanted to hear about racing tonight on the show. I know um, I read that. Please don't talk about racing. Well, we're going to talk about racing. And we're going to talk about what happens when you race and what you learn when you race. And Nora, we, we had the vision of going there and truthfully skunking the competition. Felt really good with the um, with the Diablo race car. Uh, testing went very well in Arizona. Um, we're like, okay, let's go hit the green flag. And unfortunately, we went, I think, 15-mile liaison and 12 miles into the special. Um, the motor went clack, 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 clack. Uh, obviously, um, I asked Max you know, what happened, and I, I was riding with him. And he said, just shut off. <laughs> like, oh, no, that's bigger than shut off. Uh, we lost oil pressure and I got a video here that I want to play but also this car reminds me a lot of um, I don't know it, it, it's got a bit of a race co uh, David Chrysler look to it but it's very cab forward very big bed um, but it's a beautiful race car and I, I am really really excited with with the hard work that everybody has put into this from Mike and Matt and Shrek and, and everybody, um, Jesse, um, obviously I've mentioned most of the names before, but so much uh, hard work has gone into the design and build of these race cars, and we look forward to competing next year in Best of the Desert, in the MIT 400, as well as the Baja 500, Baja 1000, as well as just sold a couple customer race cars that will be racing 
and these customer race cars are basically um, full-blown race car builds, uh, what the rules allow us to do, and um, we learn. Every time we race, we learn. Go ahead and play the video. Can you turn the volume up? Or is you, want you want to just explain what's going on? Yeah, I'll do it again. So this is an air oil separator right here, and this is on a production car once we got back for, oh, the, from the race. Exactly what we had on the other car. There's no barb. Can you rewind that? Without a lip on the end here, this hose comes off. We're going to rewind this. It comes off and falls down like that. The basic drains. All right, so during the race, we had this oil turn line come off. I believe that Alan has talked to the guys. Uh, Alan and Daniel talked to the factory about this. But this. Um, as you'll see here, when the oil gets hot and this hose gets soaked in oil, exactly what we had on the other car, there's no barb here. Without a lip on the end here, this hose comes off. When it comes off, it falls down like that and basically drains all the oil out of the engine. So it's soaked to the sump. And as you see right there, it's draining the oil right now as we're talking. So uh, that's what happened to us. We lost an engine. Uh, this cannot happen on production cars. We need to address it right away. And um, as you saw there, I leaned it down. And as soon as I did, it started uh, draining the oil out of the sump. So um, this would be a, a catastrophe uh, with, you know, a thousand cars having this problem. This air oil separator has to have a barb on it. If there's no way to put a barb on it, we'll have to do another tool. Uh, but as you'll see here now that it has a little bit of oil on it, watch. I'll tighten it back down. Okay, it's tight. It doesn't take much. Boom, pop it right off. So I don't know if you saw that, but that is tight. Okay, that's so tight I can't get it back on. But because it has a taper, downhill taper, and it gets narrower at the end, once you tighten it, it doesn't matter who does it, it's coming off. Uh, bad design and needs to be addressed. We will fix these. On there. All right, so with that said, um, I'll take this a little bit further. Obviously, immediately, um, we're back in conversations with our supplier on the air oil separator. Unfortunately, those are made in Asia, and this week is a holiday. Um, this will be addressed. Uh, both Daniel and myself have come up with a solution of what we're going to do um, and how we're going to address it and how we're going to address it with the 200 of them that we already have in inventory. Um, but this, for us, as a, as a speed UTV manufacturing company, um, I couldn't imagine losing 100 engines mm -hmm. in the first week of business. Well, yeah. So if we didn't go to Nora and we didn't run high oil temperatures, wide open throttle, put helmets on, and drive it like a madman, you don't learn this stuff. It didn't fail in production it car testing. It didn't, it didn't fail in production car testing. It didn't fail when we tested in Arizona last week. And we go to the first few miles of the race, and it happens. And to be honest, I was, I was miserable the rest of the rally because, because of that. But we were smart enough as a team that we had already talked with the promoter um, at Nora, and we had a Chase four-seat UTV that – um, Daniel and Jason and Jeff were in and they um, had already run the first section and once they got to us we just put Max and myself in that car and kept going uh, obviously it took us a few hours because I wanted to understand what the problem was because it was early Friday anything we can learn on Friday and share with our suppliers the better um, and you know that was an hour and something later hour and a half later they got to us and basically we jumped in that car and, and we completed the day. Um, and what's cool is our production car that started with 3,500 miles on it that wasn't prepped to go racing went and ran the, the rest of the rally. And we passed Pro-R four-cylinders. We passed race Can-Ams. Um, but one of our problems is that was a production car, full production, stock gas tank. So we also learned that when you put a helmet on, and fire suits 
and tighten the seat belts with a GPS, your fuel mileage goes way down. And when I mean way down, I'm talking way down. Uh, what, we, what we're getting for mileage in normal testing in Arizona, we get about 100 miles out of a tank. Race car conditions, helmet on, 70 miles out of a tank, right? Um, and we didn't run out of gas, but we knew we were gonna run out of gas, so we started looking for farmer fields. Obviously, who knows what kind of P-mix we got, but we got some P-mix, we plugged it in, made it up to the special, went and got fuel. The next special, we just stopped a couple times because we knew the fuel mileage was a lot less. Um, so we, we did learn a lot racing, and there's a, there's a cool picture. Um, and we did race with four people in the car at one time. Um, but what we learned at the racetrack, um, we can address immediately. And this turned right into a conversation that I had uh, a couple days later. Uh, on Tuesday this week, I was invited, now that we're a manufacturer, we got invited to the manufacturer, manufacturer UTV rules committee. Um, so we were on the phone with with the guys, Simon from Can-Am, we were on the guys with phone, Polaris, uh, Honda, Kawasaki, um, I think that was, I think that was all that were there. Uh, Polaris, yeah, five of us with Speed UTV. Um, and then we had some industry experts there as well. And it was really good to hear Simon from Can-Am talk about why they race and explain to Best and Desert why they race as race teams were wanting modified suspension components, modified front ends, um, and obviously other manufacturers wanted four cylinders, but you know, if we were to build a four cylinder turbo, um, I don't think it's fair that a four cylinder races in a two cylinder class. I think the rules need to be uh, 1000 CC. That's what we, we built a car around, and that's what Simon um, wanted as well, and I believe that when it was all said and done, Honda, Kawasaki, uh, Can-Am, and myself, we were all good for the 1,000cc uh, rules in the, in the Pro Turbo class. There is a class for more than 1,000ccs. Um, now, Best and Desert will have to make a decision what they do, but I know that we, we voted in the 1,000cc uh, class for Pro Turbo. Um, but back to what Simon said is they race. They race their differentials, they race their axles, because the stuff they learn racing, like on Phil Burton's car and Dustin Jones's car, that's stuff that they implement into their cars. This is the exact same reason we will run a factory speed UTV race team. We'll run customer cars as well, but we will run a factory team that will use our engineers, it will use our, our staffing internally to do this, because what we learned at Nora, we addressed Monday morning, it was Friday afternoon. We didn't have to wait till Monday to do this because I didn't have to wait for a race team to give me a report. We were there, we saw it ourselves, and we were able to jump on and address it. So this, this fix will be put into your production car, and uh, this fix will happen immediately, and we believe we have a solution to modify all of the existing AOS systems without changing any AOS specification, just a way to hold that hose clamp. Now, Rubber hoses are made of petroleum as well, and hoses sweat. Um, we've seen hoses grow. This was a problem that was going to happen, and we know we have to have barbs there, and now it's going to be fixed. So what we learned racing uh, gets put into your past, your consumer car instantly, and that's, uh, that's one of the things we've done here at Speed UTV. Jimmy Tyner, sorry, i got to call you out, buddy. Um, he said... Um, they, we struggle to produce cars, and something needs to change drastically. I don't know if he's sending me his resume to be our CEO, uh, but he said he needed to check my resume and Todd's resume because um, neither of them know how to do this. Jimmy, I'm sorry, buddy. Um, we're not hiring. We're not hiring a CEO. I'm going to continue to do what I do. I'm going to do the best job I can at looking you guys in the eye and telling you the best answer I can give you that day with a solution we have. Today, we can now sell cars in the United States. Uh, yesterday, uh, I could have yesterday. Uh, a couple days ago, let's say last Friday, I didn't have that certificate in my hand. 
I could not sell cars in the United States. Today we have that certificate. We can sell cars in every state but California. Um, you know, I, I gotta be honest, um, these, these guys like this, uh, I played that, um, the hater song before, and these guys, they drive us. They drive us to be better. They, they push us. Um, they push us to know more about the industry, know more about the sport, know more about ourselves and our cars. But I can tell you one thing, Todd and myself will look every one of you guys in the eye and have a straight conversation with you. There's no BS, we're not hiding. Uh, we're here to address the issues. And when we have an answer, we'll give it to you. When we don't have an answer, we'll probably sit quiet for a little while until we understand what that answer is and then give you our solution and what we're gonna do to solve it. And we'll continue to do that at Speed UTV. I will tell you, I know Jimmy's a customer. I appreciate your business. Hopefully you want to remain a customer because I called you out. Um, but, you know, this is what it is. And um, this has been a gnarly three years. But as you see, there is UTVs all over this garage that I did not build at my race car factory in North Carolina. Um, you know, these are millions and millions and millions of dollars in tooling to be able to do this. And um, I wouldn't be able to do it without all of our loyal customers. Um, and the haters on the internet that eat popcorn during my shows, gotta be honest, you drive me to be better. You drive me to raise the bar. You drive Todd, you drive Jason, Daniel, everybody to step our game up. So we appreciate you as well. My dad told me at a young age, it's the day they stop talking about you, is the day you have to worry. Well, you guys are talking and we're continuing on doing what we do and we're gonna get cars to consumers uh, very, very, very soon. And um, like I said, I gave you a date. Five, somewhere between five and eight weeks, we believe the first customers will receive cars. Next one. Tires. Um, this was an interesting one. Uh, we brought tires to Sand Sports. Every tire we brought to Sand Sports in a 35 we sold. Um, we have not done any testing on 35s prior to Nora race. And once the race car went out, obviously put the stuff on um, the chase car. And we rolled the brakes over. We worked, did a deal with Willwood, um, which we'll talk about that in next week's show. Um, but we do have performance packages for brakes now. Uh, we did put those right onto our production car. Um, we also put our 35s right onto the production car and I was very surprised because I thought we were going to wear the rear fender out of it, but I think with the added bump stop control that we have in the shocks and the, um, the rubber bumper that is about a half inch of rubber bumper, um, that looks like that's going to work to clear 35s. But what we did is throughout our testing, we continued to develop a shock. Uh, that's better than what was before and this development this latest change is in all the production shocks and that shock is not just a normal graph that goes up it has a, a massive rising rate uh, it has two stage springs also has I think 12 stages of rear compression and rebound control and it turns basically into pneumatic stop so we did not uh, did not bottom out very hard if we did and we got through Nora and we didn't have any tire rub on the fender and the skid plate was looking pretty good in the car. 35s um, were good. Uh, we're very pleased with our 35 inch tall tire. Um, we don't have a lot of testing on them, but we got 250 miles on them. Um, and all the suspension components obviously handled 35s. Um, the brakes um, needed some help with 35s. Willard was the answer for that. So I'm glad that we were thinking ahead of a package for 35s. Uh, all of our production cars do come with 32s. Uh, obviously, we'll look at 2023, 2024 about introducing a 35 as a production package. But right now, all of 2023 cars will come with 32-inch speed tires. Uh, gearing. I uh, wish, wish Alan was down here. He's down here a few minutes ago. Uh, they asked if we changed the clutching. Zero clutch changes. Now, if you're in the sand, it might be different. But Baja is very hard packed. It's very um, um, like decomposed granite on the on the base 
with a very slippery surface on top. Uh, the Crown 35 that we ran was was very good in Baja, and I'm I'm very happy with the package, the compound, everything we did with that tire. Clutching was good, no problems. Crescent Storage Box, you guys know you want me to sell you something. Um, we're always selling. Most of you guys have already bought it, but this is the uh, storage box, and I want to clarify, clarify that the 35-inch um, tire does clear with storage box. As you can see from the factory, we gave you three options, uh, four options, sorry, Daniel said four, of spare tire placements. So if you want to put storage box on the right, you can do it on the right, you can do it on the left, or you can move the tire to the back and you can put it at the front. Maybe Daniel has a picture of that. There we go. This is a, a different configuration. And as you see, this is, this is the fourth option, which is California pre-runner style, drop the tailgate, drop in the back, you have room for all three storage boxes with a 35 inch tall tire. There they are closed, there they are open. Born in Baja, we love it. Um, can't say enough about Baja. Uh, the locals that let us race on the roads, both Nora and Score for putting on great races. And um, allowing us and teaching us, the Baja teaching us how to build a proper UTV. And um, oh, we're gonna get in trouble, we're gonna call it out again, Daniel, no helmets. Um, continuous development daily. Uh, we watched what the side-by-side -side guys did with the Polaris, and we wanted to make sure that wasn't gonna happen with us. If we didn't do this, it would have happened. Uh, we learned a lot testing, lots of drifting, Lots of high lateral G loads, um, lots of smiles, lots of fun. Check this out. Massive, massive, massive body roll, all four tires on the ground. All right, we've got a geometry on our speed UTV that if you look at the rear, when it slides, it jacks the car down. If you watch some of our, our videos from Sand Sports and the, the video with Terry where it flipped over there, um, we have about three feet lower rear uh, roll center than a, than any UTV in the market. Three feet. It's massive. Uh, and it literally tucks the car down uh, and picks up the front tire like an SST. Completely opposite than all the other UTVs. They go in the corner and they pick up their inside rear tire. We pick up the inside front as we roll back to power. Um, really stoked with the geometry on that. Really happy with the tire package. Um, and, and what it does, and I'm excited to, to bring this thing to market. Oh, engine, machine line. Um, we do have a fully functional, and everybody's gonna say, where's the engines, but there's one there, and there's probably some in there, but it is fully robotic. Uh, engine, machining line, as well as the assembly line is up and running, and all production engines will be coming off of this machine. This is some tooling, um, pretty cool picture here. This is for plastic tooling and the detailing to get the carbon look in the plastic is, ma is very cool. Um, when we had to do new doors, that was machine new tooling. Uh, and these are massive tools. Uh, give you a size of the rear number plate tooling. There's Daniel 6.3 standing up next to the tooling. And this is all the, um, the tooling and the the heating and cooling processes that have to go in there and weaving structures in the back side of the tooling. So I'll give you some cool stuff that we have not shared with you yet. And um, what's the date of this? October 18th. October 18th. Is there a date on it? Yeah. Top row. Virtual oh, conference. Right there. Virtual conference. October 18th. Um, I will host a virtual conference with Daniel. Um, because I'm not the expert on SolidWorks, but I rely on SolidWorks and I rely on our partnership with um, with everybody um, that help us. Um, I'm going to be a key, keynote speaker, and um, it's going to be a good one. Thanks to Hawkridge. Yep, for sure. Um, without without Hawkridge's support, uh, we would not be in the position we're in today. Um, 
Nick and everybody there have, have really helped us um, learn these tools and allow us to design um, ultimate products over the top and be able to see inside and what's happening behind the scenes as we're designing it. So this is uh, this will be one that uh, that I will be hosting this time. Daniel did the last one. I'm going to host this one, and I look forward to it because uh, every time we do this stuff, we learn. And we learn we learn how to be better. I'm losing my voice. <clears throat> we learn how to be better on all aspects of it, as well as the engineering side of it. So um, awesome to have Hawk Ridge and SolidWorks on our team as partners, and we look forward to adding more manufacturing partners in the future. We'll be back next week for another show. No BS, um, basically just the facts and where we're at. So have a good weekend. See you next week.